started recording and for some reason it didn't give the recording announcement so the meeting has started yeah i got the recording announcement so hopefully everybody else did as well this meeting's being recorded uh so welcome to the november 4th tsc meeting uh, we have two pieces of information that you need to abide by as we start the meeting the first is the antitrust policy which is displayed on the screen and the second is our code of conduct as uh, is linked in the agenda. Basically, don't be a jerk. Um, everyone is welcome to join and participate. So welcome to uh, the non-TSE members who have joined us. We're looking forward to the conversation today. So we have a couple of announcements. Uh, the first announcement is one that you will see on the agenda every week um, because every week we have a, a weekly developer newsletter that goes out. And so the call here is that if you have any information that you would like to share with the wider Hyperledger developer community, then um, please add your content here and we'll make sure that it gets into the, the newsletter. The second announcement that we have is that immediately following this call, there will be a maintainer orientation call. And in, during that call, we'll be talking about a couple of different things. Uh, the first one, how to create a Hyperledger lab or an incubation project or a graduate project. So we'll be going through the kind of the project life cycle. And then uh, the second one is around uh, the question of, we'd like to host a, another Hyperledger maintainer summit. And we'd like to find out from the community what they might like to see in that summit as we cover that and how it might work. So looking forward to getting some input and feedback from the, the wider community. Are there other announcements that people have that are not on the list? I, I do. I have uh, two other announcements. One is that our uh, marketing uh, DevRel call is next week. It's on the calendar. Um, we're trying to figure out the future direction of that call. Um, so please attend. And the second announcement is that uh, you will soon see a cancellation for this meeting, this TSC meeting, and I will send out a new uh, invite. So don't be surprised when you see this meeting canceled later today, because there will be a new invite coming out very shortly thereafter. That's all I got. All right, anybody else have any announcements? Okay, well, let's then uh, get into the agenda. So as always, the first thing on the agenda are our quarterly reports, uh, which are all um, held over from previous meetings. Um, I apologize to the Aries and Indy community. For some reason, last week I was a week off when I listed the upcoming reports. So uh, most likely that is my fault and not their fault for being late. <laughs> um, but anyway, there are some uh, existing reports that are out there. Uh, I went through them this morning. I think the two that had maybe some comments uh, or questions that we could talk about in this meeting are the Avalon and the Sawtooth report. Um, so I think on the Avalon report, uh, there was a question around um, what would it look like to split out the Intel SGX portions to move that to the confidential compute consortium and what kind of code would be left in the, the Hyperledger source repositories? Uh, would it be the, the blockchain connectors and, and kind of what would that look like? Um, I don't know if we have anybody who's from the Avalon team that's on the call. I can talk to somebody at Intel and see if they will respond. Okay. I think the thing to do for me is probably call into one of their meetings since that's what we're encouraging TSC members to do. Sounds good, Dano. All right. Um, so on the Sawtooth one, the, um, the comment at the end was specifically around um, details about kind of who's using Sawtooth and how do we get data and stories out there surrounding this. Um, I am bringing this up mostly to ensure that the staff has seen this question because 
as Arun mentioned um, in his response, is probably a question for the Hyperledger staff. Um, and, and how do we get data specifically about our projects into uh, the greater Hyperledger marketing and, and blogs and, and those sorts of things. So um, I don't know if anybody on the staff would like to comment on best ways to get information about the different projects and what's happening in those projects. Um, I'll take a stab at it. Um, that basically comes by request. Uh, we reach out, we ask people to, um, you know, give us the, the information and write the case studies. We you know, work with them to write the case studies and the blog posts, et cetera. Um, I don't have a, I don't know, I, David Boswell, I don't know if you are aware of any efforts in that area for Sawtooth. Um, I know, I think you're, you're right. I mean, as far as tracking users go, that's not something that would be an insights. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, yeah, this is really reliant on people in the community who are doing things with a specific project, letting us know, right? I mean, unless somebody tells us it's hard for us to know. I will say this is again, maybe where the idea of a liaison could come in handy because it just, I know because I have been to some of these special interest group calls, sometimes things about Sawtooth come up in there. So, for example, in the media and entertainment SIG, there was a really interesting presentation earlier this year about an NFT marketplace that was built on Sawtooth. But again, that might not have gotten much exposure outside of that group. So there are things that are happening. I, I think, it, again, maybe the question is, how do we surface that more widely? Uh, you know, uh, sometimes also there are meetups, for example, that feature a specific project that might not get seen beyond that. Uh, um, but Rise Rise right, as far as like something that shows up on the Hyperledger site, for example, I mean, that's really on, on the onus of the people who built a, a tool with Sawtooth in this case to agree to create a case study, right? Uh, so um, I think the answer is we're a big sprawling community and things happen. And like, how do we pull that information together and make it more discoverable is maybe a wider issue beyond just what's going on with Sawtooth. But, um, but you know, maybe, again, maybe that's a, a wider discussion, but some things are happening with Sawtooth if that's the question and how do we surface that? Uh, yeah, that's a good question for the marketing committee maybe. Okay, maybe this uh, is I, a... Oh, sorry, so, can I no, just no, add? Go. Sorry, sorry yes, I'm, on, sure. I'm on my phone. Um, I just wanna add that, yeah, surfacing the, this information is the big part of it. I mean, just from the member case studies that we do, we reach out to all our members. Um, we did just publish one on Sawtooth, which is Bondi Value. And I know Sexton's in there as an official case study as well. Um, as, um, but yeah, I think it's service. I think if the, the question and maybe is Kamlesh on? Yeah, yeah. Vanilla, I, I'm here. Is 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 that yeah, maybe we can talk offline, but um yeah, I think David's point about surfacing where this information is easier for for you and for others um is the right approach. So, so actually mainly for others because in the last four to five years, like I am and my company were using the hyperledger things. And uh, even I talk to the many community members, whether they are using Hyperledger, non-Hyperledger projects. So for other people, Hyperledger means Hyperledger fabric. And other things could be maybe for the identity management, people talk about the Indie Aries. Oh, mainly Indie, not even the Aries. So, but we have different DLT like Iroha and other, other projects. So if you have such, such data, so community and the, the uh, blockchain architect can decide like which is the right product and right DLT for the particular use case. Because currently the, the I see and I face uh, with the different uh, customers and clients, they only know about the high fabric is a hyperledger project. But if, if you have good stories and good production deployment of the other projects and right fit for the particular use cases, then it should be kind of communicated to the community, the broader level, so they can make a right choice for selecting any, any DLT. Okay. 
but David, did you came off mute? Did you want to? Yeah, I mean, I hear what you're saying, and I think, yeah, maybe that's part of a, a, a maybe a follow up to the greenhouse task force. That one of the kind of open issues that came out of that that maybe we want to decide what to deal with. But I, what I hear you saying is maybe how do we help people get started and find the right part of the hyperledger project for them? And maybe for some people that's one project, and for some people it's another one. So. To me, that sounds like an onboarding question, not specifically necessarily related to Sawtooth where this question came from, but how do we onboard people to any of the Hyperledger projects or labs? And I think we could certainly do a lot more around helping people get oriented and, and finding the right project or lab that's a fit for them. So I'd love to talk more about what to do with those open tasks that came out of those greenhouse, the greenhouse task force. Okay, sounds good. Um, I think then we'll move on in the agenda. Uh, before we move on though, are there other questions that didn't get surfaced in the reports that people do have on any of their reports? All right, so it sounds like a no. Um, I will then uh, move on to the white paper task force that was add it to the decision log. Um, the intent of this task force is to create a white paper around the role of blockchain in the elections process. So um, I didn't see any comments or anything show up specifically on the issue itself. Um, are there, is there a discussion that people want to have on this particular um, decision item before we think about coming to a decision. Um, Tracy, uh, sorry, for me personally, I'm completely lacking the, the background on this uh, initiative. Uh, was this a mandate from the TSC or from the, the, the foundation in general? How, how, does, how did this come about? Yeah, so definitely not a mandate uh, from the TSC. Uh, the folks in the community, uh, Vikram specifically, who's on the call, I believe, today, uh, added this request as something that they are interested in um, in pursuing. Hart? Hey, uh, I guess my thought is this is a super good idea, um, and it's, it's always good to have people exploring these applications. Um, I guess the question is, what or how is Hyperledger planning on endorsing this? Yeah, that was going to be my question. Would this be uh, endorsed by Hyperledger in general, or this is just something contributed by the community? I mean, because we're, we're also writing, you know, there are also sort of groups of Hyperledger people writing academic papers. Um, you know, do should we get those approved by Hyperledger or is there a process? I mean, it might be good to, to advertise papers too, right? Um, just curious about this or if anyone has any thoughts. I can say what we've done before when a paper has come out of one of the official approved Hyperledger groups, we've put it on the website uh, uh, and have given it Hyperledger branding. So for example, the telecom specialist group has written two papers so perhaps that was some of the motivation here by the people wanting this to be an official task force group so it could kind of receive the same sort of uh, process. Okay. Arno? Yeah, and so I guess David won't be surprised by what I'm going to say here because that the point has been, you know, a, a point of contention for a while is the, the, the very use of the term white paper. I mean, for some of us with some research background, you know, white paper conveys a very a specific type of, of document, which I don't know here if it's actually implied to be that kind of white paper or not. You're absolutely right. And you're right. I, I didn't kind of go into those details. You're right. The telecom group called their papers solution briefs, not white papers, just for clarity. Yeah. Yeah, I'd suggest it to, that to stay away from using the term white paper because it does tend to carry that uh, quite a bit of meaning for some people at least. And so I guess that's my question to, you know, here, 
is that really intended to be a research type of paper, which, you know, again, comes with quite a bit of expectation. And I mean, I take it from Hart's reaction that he reads that as a, he's a research guy. And so he takes it as, as a kind of research type of paper. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds to me what's missing at this point is for for uh, this gentleman to find a um, to find an endorser. It can be a, a TIG, uh, SIG, or uh, one of the the projects, so they can have in the end have a platform to to publish this, right? Art. Yeah, thanks, Arno. To follow up on the comments, you know, yeah, when I see white paper, I expect something like new to be constructed. Um, and, you know, maybe this is like a, an SOK paper or a systemization of knowledge, which is also great. And I, I don't want to discourage this effort at all. Um, I think it's fantastic that we have people around Hyperledger getting together and do this. Uh, I just want to, you know, properly figure out um, what we want to call it and, and how we want to to handle it, so we can have more of these in the future. Okay, thanks, Hart, Nathan. Uh, and I think that that distinction of getting the research done and whether we endorse the research is important because a, a lot more of this kind of work would be really helpful, even if. A lot of us might consider this work dangerous or, or difficult to do right. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be trying to figure it out and, and do better. I know that, that, you know, publishing things like healthcare records on blockchains and voting on blockchains are often considered very dangerous activities because of the track and trace ability that's involved in those use cases. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be, you know, putting our best thinking forward in, in terms of what's possible, what's not possible, what's recommended, what's not recommended. And this is the kind of effort that will lead to that. And if I could just jump in real quick, sorry, I didn't raise my hand. This is another example where maybe there are things happening in the community where, you know, if we had more cross connections, we could connect the dots. Just anecdotally, I know that Jim Mason has organized a meetup tomorrow uh, with somebody talking about a different white paper on voting using blockchain. So a lot of this stuff is happening. So maybe I would encourage the people who, you know, want to do this to go to that meetup, I sent the link to Arun, so they have it. But just, there are things happening in the community on this. Maybe we can connect some connect some dots and uh, uh, just flagging that. All right, thanks, David. Jim? Yeah, I guess I'll just like to, to think about what the next step should be. Seems like we, we need to find existing expertise on the subject. Uh, you know, from the uh, from the projects or from SIG working groups. If we don't believe there are existing expertise that can do the the, the paper justice for reviewing it, then we may need to form a new new task force or new SIG. Okay. Um so Vikram, I know you you are on the call um, as you submitted this, and I see that you just raised your hand. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to talk. Yeah, hi everyone. Hi, you know this is Vikram. It's you know good to be you know uh, part of this meeting. So what I wanted to do is you know uh, as part of this task force, you know, so you know we uh, you know came up with this initiative at you know Hyperledger India chapter. So as part of the chapter, you know, uh, you know, we folks, you know, uh, looked into that, you know, the block, you know, blockchain elections is kind of a hot topic uh, when it comes to, you know, for example, what is happening in India and abroad. So uh, although in India, you know, we haven't tested this much, but you know, uh, there are, you know, success stories and you know, challenges that people have faced abroad as well. You know, where you know this has happened. So we did a bit of, you know, we did, you know, look into a, for a while before we submitted this. Uh, so the idea here is to, you know, uh, one, you know, gather the information, what has happened, <clears throat> make it part of this, you know, initiative and, you know, from their learning and as part of it also look at that, you know, how this can be implemented and not just in one way, <coughs> you know, come up with, you know, multiple ways of, you know, how this can be achieved and, you know, what are, what is it? 
then that you know if someone is you know jumping into it or probably wants to do something about it you know for blockchain and elections it could be you know their reference material to you know know from you know a crux that okay uh, who all have done it and you know how it all happened and again you know uh, not particularly you know uh, just you know i understand you know someone suggested that uh, you know maybe you know we should look at a product or something so from that perspective the idea is that you know we are not restricting it to a particular product so that is not the idea so the idea is to understand from that and you know suggest you know uh, based on you know our expertise and obviously you know uh, the people who we reach out to obviously different product teams and gather their opinion and you know combined opinion could form this as part of this white paper where you know uh, it could act as you know guidance for anyone who wants to do repeat the same thing or you know get into you know elections using blockchain um, i'm not sure you know if i uh, you know uh, provided all the answers that you know uh, you're looking for uh, so please please feel free to you know, uh, ask Right, thanks, Vikram. Kamlesh. Yeah, so uh, adding to Vikram's point, so in in India there are different uh, Indian state governments and the election commission and other regulatory bodies, or maybe like a research institute like Indian Institute of Technologies and uh, this kind of things are already using the hyperledger technology and other blockchain and piloting the blockchain kind of uh, solution for the election with the, with the remote voting or any kind of uh, election processes so so all this um, kind of research institute or maybe this uh, election bodies try to do the research and kind of reinvent the things but if uh, this is a white paper can provide some kind of some kind of details and materials so then maybe this kind of white paper can be used by this kind of uh, bodies to uh, go through the research and take a right decision whether which kind of blockchain and what kind of attributes like this was like for example zero knowledge proof uh, identity management is a really well ingredient for the any kind of election uh, solution for the blockchain so this kind of research paper i think really really helpful for the because i think lots of initiative already going on but everyone doing it in their individual basis so this kind of material uh, kind of white paper could be be kind of a starting point or maybe enhancing their solution according to the need. Okay. Uh, Angelo? Yeah, uh, thanks, Tracy. I, I must admit, I don't understand why this should happen under the Hyperledger umbrella. I, I see uh, part of the complexity of the, of the of this thing. I see, I don't know, crypto conferences or journal where uh, this can be addressed more properly, discussed at the, at, at the theoretical, uh, first at the theoretical level, um, abstracting away the blockchain. So I don't, I, I see, so we need first a solution before then going uh, uh, to, the, to the technology. So I think there are other venues where this can be discussed uh, uh, better venues that already exist. Um, and I'm pretty sure also in universities, there are already uh, groups that are working on this. Maybe Hyperledger can finance this group. So can say, oh, we will have uh, some, we will put some money on to, to help people uh, develop protocols for elections uh, in, for blockchain. Uh, in the enterprise space, this might be more uh, more, more interesting. Uh, at least from my point of view, it seems more interesting than us having a, a, a work group on uh, on this. The, I mean, we need experts, and experts in this case are people that have uh, uh, knowledge about crypto distributed systems. Uh, they know what what it means uh, to perform elections in a digital world, and so on and so forth. But, okay. Yeah. Um, so just just uh, in the sake of time, because we do have a couple of other items on the agenda, uh, basically what I'm hearing at this point is that the TSC is not ready to uh, decide on this. They do think that a white paper is the wrong terminology uh, for uh, such a work product that would be developed. Um, and then they're also looking for specifically um, I think really, to me, it sounded like, you know, 
there was interest in it, does this fall under a working group? Does this fall under a SIG? That sort of thing. I think the, the answer to that was the Hyperledger India chapter is interested in, in doing such work. Um, so I don't think anybody is necessarily saying that we that people shouldn't do the work. Um, but yet at the same time, I do think that uh, there is a concern about the, the language and the optics, if you will, of this being a white paper. Um, so I see three hands. I think Kamlesh and Angelo, you haven't uh, lowered your hands. Um, last, last comment on this goes to Hart, and then we're going to move on in the agenda. Hey, Tracy, thanks a lot. Um, I was wondering if there was a way that we could say basically to these folks, like, yes, this is a good idea. You know, we can give you like a meeting room or like a wiki page if you want to get started, but we're not ready to, you know, endorse something like this as an official hyperledger paper and certainly, you know, not a, a white paper. Um, and, and if we could get back to them with something like that, do you think that's a possibility? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a, a really good idea, Hart. And um, given that Vikram and a number of the people who are in the initial participant list are actually on the call today, I think um, that is been communicated hopefully during this call, but we can also then comment on the issue uh, to that respect. All right, so uh, thank you for the conversation on this. Um, I want to move us on to the blockchain automation framework project proposal. Uh, so we do have some guests on the call um, who are here to represent the, the project proposal. So uh, Sonak, are you going to drive us through that? Uh, yeah, I will. Thank you, Tracy. All right, so Nak, you should be able to share. Yep, here we can see it now. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Shona Proy. I'm the product owner of Blockchain Automation Framework. And um, I'll just give a brief. Uh, so the whole, uh, you know, the, this uh, uh, in, in the meeting, the link is there for the rendered version. So I just opened it. And uh, so the details are here, but I'll just run through quickly. Uh, the context. Um, not sure how many of you have heard about uh, blockchain automation framework, but in, in summary, it is it is an accelerator uh, which um, uh, gives the developers and operators uh, of a DLT uh, network um, uh, platform so that they can consistently deploy uh, production ready um, auto, uh, blockchain system or distributed systems uh, on on um, different cloud providers. I mean, we, we base all, it on Kubernetes. Uh, so it deploys it on Kubernetes, uh, so full containerized. And uh, as, as and hence, uh, it can be also deployed across uh, different public cloud or even private cloud environments. Um, Context-wise, we did start the project in uh, 2019 from Accenture, and then it was open sourced under Hyperledger Labs in October 2019. And uh, some principles that we followed are design for security, modular design. We do conform to the DLT reference architecture, which was open sourced by Accenture. And then um, we always use all of the open uh, open source components, and it is also Apache 2.0 licensed. It is infrastructure in, independent. Uh, we try to not use any cloud native cloud provider services, uh, just basic, uh, you know, VM and compute uh, or uh, networking uh, in, in most of the cases. Um, dependent wise, uh, project wise, as you can see, we, we use Ansible, uh, which is the main automation uh, provider that is provided. But in general, we use Ansible uh, more as a, as a templating tool uh, because the actual automation of the deployment is provided by GitOps. Uh, Kubernetes is the, content, the platform on which uh, the deployment will happen. We use Helm as the, uh, the, uh, the Kubernetes package manager and uh, HashiCorp Vault 
uh, we are using for uh, the uh, as a secret manager and key manager uh, because we are why we are using HashiCorp Vault uh, because it uh, we don't again uh, kind of similar uh, to be cloud platform independent. Uh, we, uh, we are using Hashi, we're not using any uh, uh, cloud key management service. And from the projects wise, from uh, DLT platform wise, uh, BAF currently uh, supports uh, these Hyperledger Fabric, uh, Besu Indy. Then we also support GoCorum and Corda Open Source and Corda Enterprise. Um, main uh, motivation wise, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but but in general, it was uh, more about uh, because we have so many different blockchain platforms and they each have them have their own uh, way of uh, deployment, way their own way of uh, key generation, key storage and deployment and their way, own way of different other uh, uh, associated services, for example, like Quorum and Besu has a private transaction manager. So uh, these uh, would make uh, the whole actual deployment uh, quite, uh, you know, complex, especially if you're trying to do it for a for a POC or a more production environment, not just a development uh, environment, which you can, you know, most of these uh, uh, providers, uh, DLT platforms has there some uh, form of a Docker compose file, which you can run it locally, but we are more in aiming towards, when aiming towards the production, ready uh, or worthy network it, it will be it will, it will be much more complex so we try to can uh, make that uh, cross that bridge basically uh, and uh, the main objective as well is is to provide the developers also a you know an architecture of how uh, a blockchain network or in case of production how you can take care of the security uh, key generation store key storage and management as well as as the main operations like addition of a new node uh, or um, deployment of uh, we also provide like have a, a sample application so in case someone wants how, how to uh, to know how a sample application an application a blockchain or a distributed application would uh, look like so that's that's the summary and this uh, again it's it's a very long uh, description but the solution in general uh, is uh, we we do have a set of configuration file or one configuration file if we are only deploying a single uh, network uh, and then baf reads it and then translates it into uh, kubernetes uh, sorry uh, helm uh, value files which are used by uh, flux operator to automate the deployment of uh, the choice of platform that was selected uh, in general i can deal with uh, i can describe this uh, the the architecture or the whole process basically so we we do have everything is containerized so we use uh, the uh, images the fab in this example the fabric uh, images and then we have written our ansible code which does all these activities like uh, certificate creation, CA deployment, joining a channel, order server services, nodes, and all that. And then an operator or a developer will provide the input, which is the uh, which is the configuration file, which we generally call network YAML. And the Ansible automation will use the Helm chart and create uh, those uh, packages uh, for so that it gets deployed on Kubernetes. And this format is used for all, all the platforms uh, like uh, Besu, Indy, uh, Quorum, uh, Corda Enterprise, as well as Corda Open Source. And from a resource wise, yeah, so until now uh, from this document, uh, we have uh, 41 total contributors and uh, it has been over past, uh, you know, since 2019, we have uh, actively uh, participated in uh, the community. We have, we all our meetings and the planning happen on, on, on open, uh, open community on Zoom. And uh, then uh, we have, uh, uh, all uh, we have like at least uh, for past 14 months uh, sorry for 14 contributors in the past six months and we have uh, now uh, got some sponsors uh, for at least uh, three other different companies uh, and and one independent contributor as a sponsor uh, we have all the deployment guide and the uh, operations guide uh, detailed we have uh, very uh, 
quite thorough uh, uh, read the docs documentation. And as I just said, we, we also have the sample supply chain and the uh, uh, sample in D, which is the um, Aries example application uh, deployable via uh, BAF so that we, you can, anyone can prove the working uh, of, the deploy, uh, of the DLT network. A uh, few FAQs are here, um, uh, just con confirming on, 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 I'm just, I, again, I'll not run through all the thing. So um, difference between blockchain automation framework and uh, blockchain as a service. Uh, so the main point there being uh, blockchain automation framework, the scripts are uh, not tied to a specific cloud provider. And it is also, uh, has sub, I mean, we support multiple different versions and I mean it is again first of all it is open source so anyone can uh, take it and uh, uh, deploy there uh, with uh, with some changes deploy in a newer version or an older version of of a specific DLT platform if they choose to uh, it supports heterogeneous deployments across multi cloud. And uh, it is bring your own infrastructure. So the, the only thing that we ask is, is uh, it's a Kubernetes uh, and, and Vault, one Vault. Uh, that's, that's the minimum, uh, but, but that's uh, anyone can bring their own infrastructure. Uh, the uh, organization and all everything can be managed by a single network YAML file, which, which is basically an operator uh, YAML file. And then we, as I said, we also have a sample supply chain application. Uh, these are the platforms that we are supporting. And uh, from comparison wise with other uh, labs, uh, we did uh, discuss uh, working with Cello. We did have uh, in participated meetings, uh, but then uh, as, as I know, uh, Cello for, uh, only supports uh, uh, fabric uh, right now. And um, we did not get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, feedback from then about the collaboration. Uh, the other highlight that I'd like to mention is that uh, Fabric Operations Console uh, is now fully integrated with BAF. Uh, basically, the, we, I, we have uh, created uh, a Helm chart so that we can deploy Fabric Operations Console on uh, or using BAF. And, uh, and then that basically means all the opera, fabric uh, operations that you can is avail available through Fabric Operations Console uh, can be now done uh, on, on a BAF network. Okay, uh, we have maintainers. Uh, we have uh, yeah, multiple companies uh, represented in the maintainers. And uh, for project use, usage, I mean, at least uh, for uh, within Accenture, we know that we, we have participated in at least seven projects uh, where BAF has been used uh, both for production and, and as well as POC uh, projects. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, I don't think I'll, I mean, we can answer any questions, uh, but on on the uh, yeah i think that's that's all otherwise the legal part uh, from the naming and all that kind of things we don't have a choice of name and we'd like a hyperledger committee to choose a name for for us and uh, from licensing it is apache to license all right thanks so much Sonet, for going through that um so at this point open for discussion uh comments questions anything that people have uh, related to this particular project proposal Angelo. Beautiful. This is what I want to see. I, I'm looking forward this to become a Hyperledger project. Really, really nice. All right. Thanks, Angelo. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, Jim. Yeah, I also think this is a very good uh, step forward. Um, uh, my, my main concern is uh, regarding how to position this uh, with Chell, both being a uh, top level project. Seems like both are trying to solve this, the, the same problem, but um, seems like BAF is further along, uh, even though it came about later than, than Chell. That, that's my impression. Maybe this is not uh, accurate. Um, are we going to uh, retire one and then replace it with 
with Bath, or um, what's what's this feel like? It's it's a uh, it's a duplicate between the two. Yeah. So I mean, I'm happy to comment on that or provide my thoughts, but I, I would love to hear other people's thoughts on that as well. Um, my expectation is that there would be no change to cello as it stands today. If I might, um, mm -hmm. I, I'm cursed without a raise my hand button. Um, no problem. I, I, I would uh, say that this is a, a topic that has been on the TSC backlog uh, for a while, uh, which is how do we, uh, you know, if, if a project is not doing what it set out to do, uh, does it become, what, what do we do with it? Does cello become fabric cello? Does explorer become fabric explorer? That's, those are questions I think for the future. Um, and I would agree with Tracy's assessment that immediately um, nothing would change. If, if BAF was approved, we would have BAF and cello and that would be it. Uh, Arno? Yeah, so a couple of things. So first, you know, from uh, just, I mean, the, the, the proposal on it by itself, I think it is definitely worthwhile. Um, and, you know, we always tend to favor that lab of project starters labs, even though it's not mandatory step. I mean, clearly, you know, here we have the case of a team that has been working for quite a while in the lab. They, they, we can't say that they've been pushy. <laughs> they took their time. They have set themselves up as a, within the hyperledger and um, you know, organization, and they live by the organization's rules. And you know, I say that because I'm a lab steward and I saw it coming and I've kind of looked at it a few times. And for me, it has given all the good signs. So just from that point of view, I think it makes sense. Um, now, the question is pertinent with regard to cello. And I wanted you, if you could expand on the answer, but it sounds like, you know, the way I read the, the text that's right there, uh, you know, the result of our initial discussion is that BAF can be another Kubernetes-oriented agent within cello is unfortunately what, you know, we, it, it's a polite way to say, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you guys can just be, you know, uh, uh, feed to our project. And, that is a bit hand wavy in my opinion, but uh, you know, more generally speaking, so I'm interested to know a little bit more behind this, but basically this is saying the cello team doesn't want to you know, embark in some kind of convergence. And so we have lots of precedents of competing projects. And so, you know, I'm sympathetic to what uh, Jim says that maybe we shouldn't have that, but that's the way it is. And I don't see that this is a ground for us to say, no, they can't have it. There, it does raise again, the question that I touched on last week. It was like, you know, when and how do we prune the garden? But, uh, you know, it's kind of a separate question in my opinion. Yeah, and, and Arno, I, I will say that when uh, the team originally started working in labs, part of what we went through was a process of seeing what exists in the community today. How can we have conversations with the different uh, projects as well as labs to find out uh, how we might work together more closely, right? So we, we did attend, uh, multiple cello calls uh, before we finally actually made it to have a conversation with them. Um, I was not part of that call, so I can't give you specific details. Um, the, the quote that you see here in the, the FAQ is what I got back as the answer uh, from, from the conversations that did occur. So uh, yes, I would probably read that as well as, okay, that's nice. Um, but at this point there, there wasn't interest, right? Um, now, it has been a while, I will say, I think, since that conversation happened. So, um, you know, I don't know where we would go from here at this point, but uh, just to, to elaborate kind of on, on that particular comment uh, that you had, Arno. Uh, Angela, you had your hand up next before we get to Sonak. 
Yeah, uh, just just to say that uh, personally, I, I don't find uh, I don't find the problem having projects that are more or less solving the same problem. The same problem. Uh, uh, actually, we have multiple blockchain systems, so they are actually trying to solve the same problem. So I don't I don't see uh, actually I, I I see this positively as competition, and then we we will see what will happen. But I agree with Arno indeed, and you Tracy, uh, all the others have said the same that pruning is probably uh, the, the the most important thing, but not the competition. Not the competition. Actually, we should uh, foster the, the the competition there. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Angelo. And I think obviously not necessarily uh, part of this particular conversation right around blockchain automation framework, but a conversation that we have should have in a future uh, meeting regarding the, the pruning. Uh, Sonak, I think you were next. To yeah, me. yeah. So I was going just to add on that. Yeah, we did uh, try to, uh, I mean, not try, we reached out to Cello team and uh, um, had, had attended their conversations and all, and even uh, tried to uh, uh, contrib contribute as well. But yeah, it, it was, uh, I would say that it was not, uh, not met with a similar, uh, you know, uh, taking forward from from the cello side uh, and uh, from uh, the current uh, I, I always uh, see what is happening in cello as well uh, i can see that they are they're still having uh, it's only one fab fabric uh, and even i think it's only 1.4 only not even two uh, and and um, it is more uh, revolving around the you know the docker and it has become more about the front end operational console now that I believe, uh, whereas BAF uh, is is more on the uh, on the deployment of the network. Um, as as I said, we we have now can uh, now incorporated with Fabric Operations Console, and we don't intend to become a front end. All right, thanks for that, uh, Jim. Yeah, um, so this is by no means a uh, criticism to either teams. Uh, I, I think I, I definitely see the difference between the two, uh, both in terms of one being more of a management console, the other is its underlying provisioning, but also the, the approach. Uh, one is template-based, uh, more declarative, the other is complete, uh, completely code and scripting. Um, I, I guess we just need to be careful with setting up the, the precedents where when a team wants to solve a, a problem that a existing project is already uh, supposed to be solving. Um, what are the things that makes them want to start something new rather than contributing to an existing project? Because if everybody is if people are not able to work with existing teams to contribute to contribute and make it better, and they ended up having to create something completely different, then I think um, the end result is sure we have competing projects and it's good to have competition, but maybe we would have had something better if, if all the teams work together. I just don't know what are the things we can do to encourage more collaboration rather than starting something from scratch. Maybe yeah. there's something that uh, both teams can share to, to see what could have happened uh, to have allowed the, the teams to work together instead of you know, creating something new. Yeah, I think these were um, points that came up last week, right, when we were talking about the objectives. Uh, Jim, did you raise your hand again or did you intend? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, not hearing anything negative, are there any sort of concerns that people have um, other than the, the overlap potential with Cello? All right, are we, uh, are we ready to move forward with this? Or are we wanting uh, more time to, to take, to consider this proposal? I'm happy for us to vote on it and approve it. All right, so that sounds like a uh, proposal. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll move. All right, anyone want a second? I second. Okay. And Daniel, I saw you had your hand up. Did you want to uh, comment or? 
I was just wondering if the name needs to be done before or after the vote, if what the precedent on that is. Uh, so I think, yeah, Hart, go ahead. It can be done after. We did cactus well after the vote. Okay. So as long as there's precedent, then no issue. All right, so I think we're ready to vote. Uh, shall we do a roll call vote, Rye? Sure, and uh, I will do it completely. I'll, I'll do it from the bottom up. Um, the matter before the uh, technical steering committee, Troy, how do you vote? Yes. Tracy? Yes. Peter? Yes. Nathan? Yes. Cam Lesh? Yes. Jim? Yes. Hart? Yes. Grace? Yes. David? Yes. Dano? Yes. Bobby? Yes. Arun? Yes. Artem? Yes. Arno? Yes. Angelo? Yes. And the, the, uh, the measure passes. So congratulations to the BAF team, the soon to no longer be the BAF team. And uh, <laughs> let's, 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 uh, let's move on. That's great. All right, great. So yeah, it's congratulations. Um, and I think we do have one last item on our agenda. Um, and I think I'm going to hand that off to Grace to talk about the uh, chat system and the concerns that exist with having both Matrix and Rocket Chat. Sure. That was on uh, our agenda this week, yes? I think that was the last one. Yes, yeah, 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 no, you're right. <laughs> um, Ryan, feel free to chime in. I'll just give the high level overview, uh, but obviously you're very, very close to this. Um, so we, um, on the BASU team, um, or I guess everyone's probably noticed that we've been running uh, and have been planning on moving to the matrix um, chat channel system for Hyperledger um, as of a few months ago, and a few channels have moved over, such as the TSC one within BASU, our BASU contributors one has, uh, but there's been a slight delay in the, or I guess a month long delay in the moving over because of the development work for matrix and it not being able to scale correctly for the entire Hyperledger group. So the work that was ongoing to make it scale for our size um, community is on pause up until I think Q2 of next year. Um, so it's uh, my question for the group where I want to kind of talk to the group about, you know, should we one, pause the matrix move and um, maybe move everyone back to rocket chat until we have a clear timeline or a clear, you know, uh, until Matrix is officially ready for everyone to move over? Um, or two, should we continue as is and kind of split while we're, um, uh, like split, I guess, as is until it's ready? Or should we, you know, consider other chat channel options and, and think about that as well? I don't know, like, this has been a BASU challenge because half of our, our maintainers are operating on Matrix right now, but our new users are asking questions in Rocket Chat. And I believe the documentation currently, um, uh, you know, and the Hyperledger sites all directs to Rocket Chat right now. Um, so we're kind of just splitting communities in our chat channels. So I wanted to raise one, how are other communities uh, addressing this? Two, um, you know, if it's, you know, maybe getting kind of agreement from the TSC on how we should move forward or, you know, if there are best practices on, on any of your all's experience? I see lots of raised hands. Hart, I think you were first. But I guess actually, let me pause for one second. Rai, did I capture everything correctly? I just want to make sure I got that right. You got it. The development resource that was working on the uh, on the move uh, is working full time on another project, and so you're correct. And uh, Hart, awesome. Thanks, Grace, for bringing this up. Um, I think ideally, and I think Grace hinted at this, like. A, a split is a really bad thing, right? We're already encumbered with, you know, I think in all of our work lives, more communication channels than we can possibly deal with. Uh, so sort of the fewer extra communication channels we add and the fewer we have in total, I think is a very good thing. Um, so, so I think uh, we should probably try to avoid a split if possible. All right, Nathan. I've noticed the same split problem with the uh, Aries and Indy communities and uh, 
had some trouble with the mobile client for the new matrix um, work. Um, and it's the kind of stuff that will get worked out over time. And I think it, it's, it'd be a good thing for us to keep everybody together on a platform until we feel like we're, we're actually ready for a full cutover because the, we've seen the same thing where the new users are showing up on Rocket Chat and having the maintainers already moved over to the new platform makes it hard to keep track of what's going on. Okay. Anyone else? Sounds like it's a common problem that exists across multiple projects, right? Yeah, so um, one thing that came out of the member summit uh, last week was there are uh, a lot of communities, uh, particularly in APAC, that are using uh, other chat platforms. They're not using either of these options. They're using WeChat or they're using uh, WhatsApp and Telegram and Signal. Um, so we should, you know, acknowledge that not it, it isn't just Rocket Chat or Matrix. You know, the current situation is Rocket Chat, Matrix, WeChat, Signal, Telegram. Uh, so it, it's worse even than it appears. Okay. Um, so I think this is um, something that we should continue the conversation on, but it sounds like uh, the desire from at least the, the people on the call here is to, to move back towards Rocket Chat and away from Matrix until we're ready to make a full-blown transition of all, um, all of the pieces, including kind of updates to the, the websites and documentation and, and that sort of thing. Nathan? Uh, just the last thing to mention there is there are competing communities that have easier accessibility on their chat. For example, for the Aries and the Indy projects, a lot of the conversations are being pushed over towards the Decentralized Identity Foundation, which has different membership requirements. And so, you know, making sure this works smoothly as quickly as we can does help us to, to gather the community and, and, and rally people behind our code projects. Okay. Based on so uh, some feedback from the community, uh, last week, uh, I did set up a uh, Discord server because that seems to be fairly popular. Um, and I'm just trying it out. So if anyone, I will post uh, the invite link if anyone wants to try Discord and anyone has any strong feelings about it, I am I would love to hear it. All right, so we are at the end of our time here. Um, I, I don't know that we actually came to a decision slash conclusion on this other than I think why people would like to move the TSC chat maybe back to, to Rocket Chat until um, till we're ready to, to make the transition completely. Will do. I'll unarchive un the channel. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, thanks for the conversation. And we will see you again next week.